The Foundation Passport is a Bitcoin hardware wallet or signing device that allows you to securely store and interact with your Bitcoin. Today, we're going to be going through how to set up use and back up your device, as well as my thoughts on the benefits and trade-offs of the Passport. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. HODL THE BITCOIN Before we dive in, big shout out to sponsors of the show, CoinKite.com. I absolutely love these guys. They've got just some of the best Bitcoin stuff out there. I love my cold card Mark IV and the plethora of other cold cards that I have in my home. Uh, the Open Dime is super awesome for easy on-the-go payments where time is of the essence and you want quick confirmations. Um, you can check out the Block Clock an absolute staple for any hardcore Bitcoiners bookshelf and things like cold power, their seed plates, uh, the tap signer for easy on the go signing, as well as the sats card. If you're looking for a more versatile open dime experience via NFC, there's just no shortage of awesome Bitcoin stuff. So check them out. Coinkite.com use code BTC sessions for 5% off everything in the store, or just click the link in the link in the show notes down below. Up next, if you're in Canada, ShakePay is a super easy way to be stacking sets. Uh, you can e-transfer in and out with no deposit or withdrawal fees. There's a thin spread and clicking the link down below to sign up. After your first $100 purchase, you'll get 30 bucks for free. You also get 30 bucks for free every single time you use your own link and refer friends and family and they do the same. Uh, you can earn additional sats back by shaking your phone every single day. That's not a joke. You can actually do that. Uh, they've got a sats back visa card, just a ton of awesome things always going on on ShakePay. So check them out, shakepay.com. Uh, and you can use uh, my link down below again for that $30 dollars after signing up. Up next, Ledin.io. You can use your Bitcoin for a ton of different services. These guys have been super useful for myself whenever I'm in a cash flow issue um, and I don't want to sell my Bitcoin, but I do need cash at the moment. I need dollars at the moment. I can deposit Bitcoin here, get a loan of dollars to my bank account. I pay back those dollars. I get back the same amount of Bitcoin. They also have savings accounts for Bitcoin and USDC uh, and they have their quarterly third-party audits in which you can cryptographically verify that your holdings have been included in that audit so you know you're not getting jerked around Celsius style. Uh, they have their B2X offering. They have their Canadian Bitcoin-backed mortgages rolling out and soon in some select U.S. states as well. You can check them out at start.ledin.io slash BTC sessions. If you sign up and fund your account, you'll get 10 bucks back. Bitrefill.com. These guys help me a ton in living on Bitcoin. I buy a ton of gift cards through these guys. There's just uh, a nonstop supply of them here. Anything you want, you can pretty much find. You can pay both on-chain and via the Lightning Network, as I do quite often. Um, you earn sats back as you shop. You can get more sats back with their referral program. You can do things like phone refills, Lightning Channel top-ups. You can all do, do all kinds of stuff here. And if you're in, you're in the US, you can actually pay bills on here so you can get on that Bitcoin standard. So check them out, bitrefill.com. And again, link down below if you want to sign up via that. And finally, if you're backing up any important Bitcoin hardware wallet, uh, you can check out the bill foddle over at privacypros.io so you can get your backup in solid steel because quite often paper just doesn't cut it. You don't want to be worrying about fire damage or water damage or stuff like that. And if it's in solid steel, well, that gives you some peace of mind. And this is how I'm backing up my important wallets. So check them out, privacypros.io slash BTC sessions, or you can just click the link down below to check them out. And with that, let's dive into the tutorial. Let's start off here with prerequisites. What are you going to need to know in order to dive into this video and start learning about how to use and set up a passport? Well, um, it's beneficial to have experience at least having done some Bitcoin transactions, though we will walk through how that works as well. Um, but of course, you're going to want to have some Bitcoin to actually store using this device if you opt to get one. Um, so really, that's all you absolutely need to know. 
Uh, some other beneficial things that you could check out would uh, be, I have an old version of the previous Foundation Passport. Just for note, this is the Batch 2. So that's an update from the older version. It's a bit slimmer. It has a USB-C as opposed to the old connector cable. Um, the SD slot uh, up top as per usual, um, but this one does have a rechargeable battery as opposed to uh, the AAA batteries that were in the last one, I believe, and the screen is upgraded. Uh, so um, yeah, a, a number of benefits here with the newer version, but we'll be going through all of that as we go. Uh, some other things that may be useful. So you, again, you can check out my old passport video if you so desire. Um, some knowledge of Blue Wallet would be beneficial as we'll be using that a little bit towards the end as a secondary option for other interfaces. Um, I'll also be touching on Sparrow, just showing you how to import and utilize your passport there as well. So if you're curious about Sparrow Wallet, uh, both Blue Wallet and Sparrow Wallet tutorials will be linked down below so you can check those out. Uh, but that's about it. So without further ado, let's dive in and get this thing started. Out of the box, you will have your device, which as I showed before, uh, navigation on the screen here, up and down, side to side on the arrows, uh, two different buttons to select options that are on the screen, number pad, um, that's pretty much it, power button on the side. Up top, you have your micro SD card slot. On the bottom, you have your USB-C for charging. On the back, you have your camera for scanning QR codes. This just pops out, it's magnetic, and there is your battery, uh, your rechargeable battery inside. Uh, also in the box, and I just pulled out kind of the main things that you're gonna need. Here's a charging cable, USB-C on either side. Um, you also have uh, a couple little dongles, USB-C uh, for Android phones so that your SD card can go in there to convey uh, information like uh, firmware upgrades, so on and so forth, or you have uh, an adapter for Apple phones, same thing, USB-C, or uh, I guess the whatever they call the lightning ones or <laughs> whatever the Apple one is. Anyway, it's micro SD in the bottom. Uh, and then you have a sheet for your seed words and your backup code. Again, um, you can jot these down on paper, but uh, you might want to get them on something more secure, uh, like steel or whatever, uh, if you see fit. And that is pretty much it. So let's boot this thing up. Let's take a look at what we're looking at. So I'm just going to hold the button on the right. And we see this thing booting up. Okay, welcome to Passport. Congratulations on taking custody of your Bitcoin and reclaiming your sovereignty. Would you like to set up the Passport via the Envoy app or manual setup? So for this video, we're going to be using the Envoy app. Um, and we're going to be working alongside that through the whole thing. You can get this uh, via the foundationdevices.com website, but also included in the uh, box will be something with a QR code that you can scan so that you can get direct from your app store. Uh, so I will pull out the Envoy app and we'll see what it says. Okay, so I've just opened up the Envoy app. This is the first thing you're going to see is uh, how do you want to set it up, connect an existing passport or set up a new one. And then, of course, we have our passport open here and we're going to choose that we're pairing with the Envoy app. So we'll check mark. Um, so it says in Envoy, select set up a new passport. So we're gonna do a little bit of uh, using both devices here. So set up a new passport. Uh, terms and conditions, you can read these through and then hit I accept down at the bottom. Okay, first let's make sure your passport is secure. The security check will ensure that your passport has not been tampered with during shipping. Hit next. Uh, and then I'm gonna hit continue on Envoy with the passport itself over here on the left, check mark. Okay, on the next screen, scan the QR code shown in Envoy. Okay, so we'll just scan. Okay, once I've scanned that in Envoy, select next and scan the following QR code. So we'll hit next. And this gives us a new QR code to scan. We'll hit continue. Allow the camera for this app and we'll scan. 
Your passport is secure. Create a pin to secure your passport. We'll hit continue. And it says, we're going to enter a six to 12 digit pin on your passport. Foundation will always uh, ask for the pin when starting up. We recommend using a unique pin and writing it down. If you forget your pin, there's no way to recover passport and the device will be permanently disabled. So it's important that you remember this pin number. So we'll hit continue. We'll leave the Envoy app for now and we'll continue on by hitting the right arrow. Okay. So we passed the security check so we can say that we passed it. Okay, now we're gonna choose a pin. Uh, for this uh, video, I'm gonna create a simple one, but uh, please choose a better pin than this. One, two, three, four, five, six, check mark. Okay, do you want to update the password passports firmware now? Now this is a good idea to do when you first get the device. Um, so I'm gonna say yes. And then it says, please, insert a micro SD card. So we do have one here. So this is docs.foundationdevices.com and over on the left hand side you can see uh, an option for firmware updates which is the page I'm on right now. Um, and this will have the most recent edition. This is a batch two device and their current, um, their current version is 2.0. Point three. So you can just click that and download the file, which I've already done. And then at that point, you would just uh, save it on to the micro SD card so that it's ready to plunk in. So I've already pulled that onto the SD card um, and we can jump over to the device here. So we're on that update firmware screen and uh, we're just going to slide the SD card in here and we'll just hit the refresh button. And then it shows us our option for the version 2.0.3. Now we're already on that version, but if you wanted to update, you just hit the check mark here. It would install the update and then it would restart the device. So easy peasy, that is all we need to do there. So it says next, let's create or restore a wallet seed. Okay, so we're gonna go next. And here it gives us some options. We can restore a backup, restore a seed, or create a new seed. Now we're gonna be creating a new seed. Also on the app, it says, uh, what do you wanna do? Restore backup, restore seed, create new seed. We're gonna choose that same option here. Okay, and it's basically walking us through what's on the passport. Select create new seed, we're gonna do that. Okay, would you like to generate it now? So we'll hit continue. Okay, so now we're gonna hit uh, on the passport. We'll go through a couple of these steps. Generate a new seed pat phrase now. Yes, we're gonna hit check mark. Okay, new seed created and saved. So we're not viewing this seed right now. Uh, we are, it's simply been created on the device. So we're gonna move on and see what it says next. Passport is about to create your first encrypted micro SD backup. The next screen will show you the backup code that is required to decrypt the backup. We recommend writing down the backup code on the included security card, which would be right here. And these detach, by the way, it's uh, perforated, okay? We consider this safe since physical access to the micro SD card is required to access the backup. So, it gives me this backup, which is a bunch of digits on a screen. I'm going to write them down on the backup section of the card that they've included. A few moments later. And it says, let's check that you've recorded the backup code correctly. So it's gonna bump me back and say, can you re-enter your numbers? So I will do that now. Check mark. You entered the backup code correctly. At this point, it says, please insert a micro SD card. So I'll take the one provided and I will plunk it in. And we'll hit the refresh button. Backup complete. Check mark. There we go. So here we're actually going to pair the Foundation Passport with the Envoy app. Now the Envoy app, we gotta go through a few things here. So we already created the encrypted backup, so we can continue. Congratulations, your new seed has been created. 
So we'll hit next. And then we're connecting Passport with Envoy. So uh, we have already connected or chosen to connect it in our initial setup. Um, and then we'll get started. Okay, scan the QR code, the passport generates. This QR code contains the information required for the Envoy to interact securely with the passport. So I continue there. This opens up my camera and on the passport itself, I'll just hit the next arrow. And this brings up a dynamic QR code for the Envoy app, app to scan. Connection successful. Now, it asks if we wanna validate a receive address. That's always a good idea to do. So I'm gonna hit the bottom button there in the Envoy app. And then it says, scan this QR code with the passport to validate. So in the passport itself, I'll hit the next arrow. Now let's check the wallet is connected correctly. On the next page, scan the receive address from Envoy. So now I scan the QR code with the passport. And it says, hey, this is indeed one of your addresses. So I'll hit the check mark, connection complete, and I'll hit continue on the Envoy app. Was the address validated? Uh, yes, we'll hit continue. And there we go. Passport is now connected with the Envoy app. I can hit check mark. And here we are. Everything is all set up ready to go and we can dive in to exploring. We'll take a look through the device, we'll take a look through the app, and then we'll start using it. So we're just gonna familiarize ourselves with the, uh, the passport itself and all the menus herein. So uh, on the main screen, sign with QR code, sign with micro SD card, this is an air-gapped device, meaning that you set up the transaction on your phone or on your camera or, or on your uh, uh, computer or whatever it may be. You take that information, you bring it to the passport, and then you approve it with the passport and then send that signature back to the computer so that you can actually broadcast your transaction. Basically, you're signing off on a transaction with this device. Okay, so those are the two options in which you can do it. You can do it via QR code or via SD card porting it to and from. Uh, you can verify an address by scanning it. And that's what we just did at the end, tail end of the pairing, is we scan an address to make sure that we own it, that it's part of the passport and it's not some random person's Bitcoin address. And then manage account. And in manage account, uh, you have account details. You can rename it. You can uh, connect this wallet with another, um, another third-party software, whatever, or you can delete the account. Okay, let's back out of that. Now you can navigate side to side here. So if we go to the left, we see all of our settings. So we see device settings like screen brightness, auto shutdown, we can change our pin, all that stuff. Uh, our backups are here. So you can go into backup and you can backup now so you can create another SD card. You can restore, you can verify a backup or you can view your backup code that we wrote down earlier. This is where you do your firmware updates, which we already did in setup, but basically it says, hey, if you wanna update the firmware, click here, it'll tell you to insert your SD card and go from there. You can also check what current version you're on. Uh, the Bitcoin settings, you can set your units, which would be sats or full Bitcoin. You can uh, deal with multi-sig if you want from here. And then any testnet coins, we're not gonna dive into testnet in this video, but that is there as well. Now in advanced, you see a, a number of different options. So security words, what this would be is um, you would see a couple familiar words in the midst of putting in your pin. So you would type in the first four digits or whatever it may be. You'd see a couple familiar words and then you would confirm that they've been the same as last time. And then you would put in the rest of your pin. And what this does is if your device is tampered with, then it basically tells you it's like an early warning system, okay? You can activate those here. They're not activated right now. I'm gonna leave them be. Uh, 
Your seed, your seed phrase is another way of backing up your passport. So we did a backup with the SD card. The seed words are much like a regular Bitcoin wallet where you write down 12 to 24 words, uh, which are English, uh, and you can store them however you see fit. And you can simply import those words to any other Bitcoin wallet that you see fit. I tend to prefer working like this. I will likely write those down off screen momentarily, and then I'll be able to import them if I see fit to another wallet. Uh, this is a developer option. If you have developer pub keys, not relevant here. Uh, the micro SD card, uh, you can format a card, list files, basically gives you access to whatever's plugged in the top. And then you can erase your passport. Basically, it erases all of the accounts and seed phrases and everything they're in. Uh, but it does not put it back to factory settings. Your pin will still remain. Okay. And then finally, uh, out of the advanced... Um, again, we'll scroll back to the main screen, our account screen, and then we'll scroll over to the side. You can add an additional account. Now this would be from the same seed phrase, but your account will still be here, or you can enter a passphrase. This is an advanced feature and we'll get into it momentarily. That's pretty much it. Over on the left-hand side here, if I hit this button at any point, it says, do you want to shut down the passport now? Uh, yes or no. And so I'll just say no for now. Okay, now that we're familiar with that, let's take a look at the app and familiarize ourselves there. In the Envoy app, you can see first on the main screen, you have devices. You may have more than one passport. You can list them all here. When you tap on them, it says what uh, the latest version of the firmware that's on it is, the serial number, and how long ago it was paired. You can also, from this screen, hit the plus button to connect existing passports or set up new ones if you have more than one device. And up top, the little bell, you can decide what you want notifications for all of these or just transactions or updates or security. Um, then we can navigate down at the bottom to accounts. There's only one account currently on my passport. As I showed you, you can set up new accounts. If I tap on that account, it gives me options to send, receive, and scan QR codes. Uh, I also can show descriptors, edit the account name, or delete it. Um, if I tap that and deselect that account, I can also add other accounts that have been set up on my passport, which we previously saw how to do. Um, and then finally, over on the right hand side here, down at the bottom, there's all of the videos and FAQs and everything so that you can learn all about the passport device itself. From anywhere on any screen, there's a little down arrow on the top left. You can see support about, but settings is kind of the one that you will be diving into. You can set your fiat currency denomination. You can set view amount in sats if you prefer that. You can have Tor connective, uh, connectivity turned on or off. It's on by default is my understanding. And you can set up custom electric ser Electrum server if you want to connect to your own node. And that is the roundup for the Envoy app. So first up, let's receive some Bitcoin to our passport or to an account on our passport. So we're gonna go down to the bottom, tap accounts, tap the account we want, and then we're gonna hit receive. So I've got a receive address right here on my screen generated from the XPUB of my passport. However, I may like to verify that. And if I want to do that, I can do that from the passport itself. So I want to check that this, this uh, address is actually genuine and part of my seed phrase, not just a randomly generated, maybe, you know, maybe my phone has been compromised. Okay. So just on the passport itself, on that main account screen, just go down to verify address and scan it. Okay, good. Looks like that is a genuine receive address allocated to my passport. So I'm safe to receive to that address. That's all we need the passport for right now. Within the device or within the, uh, the Envoy app, I'm just going to simply copy 
that address because I'm going to navigate out. I'm going to open up another wallet to send money in. You could uh, alternatively, of course, share that, paste it into a message so somebody has your address to send to, or if they're in front of you, they could just scan with their phone. So I'm going to open up Moon Wallet. This is a test wallet that I have on my phone for things like this. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit send and I'm going to paste in that address. I made notes of the last few digits there. Um, and I'm just going to send over $20. So I'm going to hit confirm amount. That looks good. I'll just say passport and I will send that off right now. Okay. So that has been sent. Let's jump back to the passport. Okay, so we can see that our balance has updated now with that incoming transaction. If I tap on the account itself, it will actually show transaction details. So I can see received transaction awaiting confirmation for this amount of Bitcoin, which equates to around this uh, number of US dollars. Okay, so we'll just wait for that to confirm and then we'll practice sending out from Envoy. Okay, transaction now confirmed. Let's try sending out of our passport via the Envoy app. So we'll just navigate right back to our uh, Moon wallet or whatever wallet you're interacting with. Close that and we'll just get a receiving address. So I hit receive, there's an on-chain address that I can copy and we'll jump back to the Envoy app. We'll hit send. At this point, uh, it says two up top. You can either paste in an address or you can tap the little square up top to open the camera and scan a QR code. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in the address I previously had. Now, how much Bitcoin would you like to send? You can send in, uh, you can s specify here with the digits or you can hit send max down below. So I'll hit send max and it will reflect the dollar value of that down below as well. At this point, everything looks good. I'm going to hit continue. All right. It says, uh, what would you like in terms of fees? So um, it says here, 138 sats, or if you want it very, very quickly, uh, it would be uh, 10 minutes, 1794 sats. That's about 35 cents. Okay. So um, standard looks fine to me. I'll hit confirm. All right. And now it says scan this QR code with your passport. So within Passport, in order to approve or view and then approve a transaction, just on the main screen here, it's the first option. Sign with QR code. You're going to select that one with the check mark. You're going to scan the QR code that is in the Envoy app. It takes a second because it's dynamic. Okay, it says you're sending this amount of Bitcoin to this destination address. Tap to the right. Is there any change? None. Otherwise it would be listed there. Tap to the right. The network fee, 138 sats. To the right. Would you like to sign the transaction? If yes, right button. If no, X. So it's signing. Okay. So at this point, uh, it brings up a dynamic QR code on the foundation passport itself. And so to scan that down at the bottom of the Envoy app. There's again, a little square to open your camera. So what are we doing right now? We're actually scanning the same transaction, but with a signature approving it. Now there's one thing to note with the QR code here. If you're having trouble scanning it, you can tap right or left to enlarge the size of the QR code. So if I tap to the right here, you'll notice that the information gets a little bit more dense. Um, but I found that going a little bit larger, uh, was able to actually scan. Now, when I did this off camera, it actually, as soon as it scans this, it sends the transaction automatically. There's no additional step. There's no review. It just sends. So you can see here in the Envoy app, it has now been sent off awaiting confirmation. I've got, already got a notification from Moon Wallet saying that it has been received, but nonetheless, I was able to receive and send out of the Envoy app. Up next, I wanna cover recovering 
your passport? Should it get erased or should you get a replacement um, or it gets lost or stolen and so on and so forth? And utilizing this SD card backup in concert with your backup code in order to recover the account that you had. So first off, let's go ahead and let's um, go over to the side here. We'll go to advanced and we'll go to erase passport. I was gonna say, are you sure you wanted to erase this? All funds will be lost if they're not backed up. Okay, without proper backup, you could lose all funds. Again, please confirm you understand these risks. There we go, erasing. There we go, and now the device will restart. Now, our pin has been retained here in uh, a, a reset like this. But when we enter into the passport itself, um, it automatically asks us if we want to create a new seed so or restore. And so this is where we're going to be restoring from backup. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to say restore from backup. Please insert an SD card. So we're going to put this in the top here and then we're going to hit the refresh button. Hey, there's a backup right here. Is this the one you want to use? If there's more than one file, you get to choose from them. I'm going to hit yes. All right, and then the backup digits, that's what we used. There was 20 of them. And then this is where I'm going to enter my backup code on the screen. I've got it just below me here, so I'll enter it and we'll check if that was correct. So it now it says restoring from backup, restore complete. And there we are, we have our account back in our passport and we should be able to interact freely once again with our Envoy app or with any third party app we see fit. Now, as much as I appreciate the fact that uh, Foundation has made their own app and that gives more optionality, um, I do really like third-party options because when you've got um, somebody that's solely focused on putting together a very versatile mobile or desktop app, then it tends to come with a ton of bells and whistles because that's entirely their focus, making sure that it functions and you get as many different options as possible. So I wanna showcase uh, the uh, ability to pair with other options. So I'm gonna show you how to pair first here with Blue Wallet. So within Blue Wallet, now there's a couple like test wallets sitting here already, but uh, you would hit add wallet or add account or the little plus button in the top right. And you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna hit import wallet. Now we'll come back to the screen in a moment, but here on the passport itself, if you scroll down on the main screen to manage account and then go to connect wallet, it's gonna give you some options and I can see Blue Wallet right here and I'm gonna choose single sig. We'll do QR code. Okay, next, scan the QR code on the following screen into Blue Wallet. So this is going to generate a QR code that I will be able to scan. Again, it's a dynamic one. So within Blue Wallet, we're just gonna, at the bottom of the screen, hit scan or import a file. We're gonna scan this. Well, that was easy. There we go. Added successfully. And we're all set. So you can see that this is indeed our same account because we have the previous transactions now popping up. Um, on the passport, if I tap to the right, it's gonna say, let's check the wallet is connected correctly. Um, and we're gonna scan a receive address from Blue Wallet to make sure it's indeed ours. So we'll hit receive at the bottom of Blue Wallet. We'll scan that really quick. And yes, indeed, that is a receive address that belongs to us. So we've connected successfully and we're all set to use the passport with Blue Wallet, which I'll be honest, is my preferred way of uh, dealing with the passport on mobile. Up next, let's take a look at how we do the same with Sparrow Wallet on desktop. So I've got Sparrow Wallet open here on my desktop. I'm just gonna go to File and we're gonna hit new wallet. We'll give it a name, we'll just call it 
passport. I'll just say batch two so that I can clarify. We'll hit create wallet. Okay, at this point, it's, we're gonna choose a single signature and we're gonna say air gapped hardware wallet. At this point, there is an option for passport here and we can hit scan. Now, within passport, we gotta get ready. So I'll just go to the passport for a second. We're gonna also go to the same connect wallet screen. So we're gonna hit connect wallet. We're gonna scroll down until we see Sparrow and we'll choose that. Single sig and we'll use a QR code. And tap to the right. And again, this will generate a dynamic QR code that we can scan with our computer. So we're ready with Sparrow. I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to hit scan. This should open up my webcam. Okay, and with that scanned, yeah, everything's basically all set. All we need to do is hit apply. This password here would apply simply to access to be able to see your account on your desktop. You don't have to add one if you don't want. Um, it's mostly about uh, OPSEC and privacy, not a risk to your funds. So I'm gonna hit no, passport, uh, no password for now. And this, if we go to transactions, momentarily, we should see it populate with our previous transactions. Okay, perfect. And so now we do indeed know that this is the same account that we've been dealing with both on Envoy and in Blue Wallet, now in Sparrow. But just to be sure, uh, and again, it asks us in the passport itself, let's check if the wallet is connected correctly on the next page. Uh, we're gonna scan a receive address from Sparrow. So I've got my camera open, we'll transition, and we'll just hit receive in Sparrow itself. I'll scan this off screen. And there we go, we can see, yes, this is an address that belongs to you, we are safe to use it. So we've now successfully connected our wallet with not only the Envoy app, but two third-party options, Blue Wallet and Sparrow Wallet for desktop. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you here is how to utilize a passphrase with the passport. So if we go over to the right from the main screen, you're gonna see new account and just under that, enter passphrase. So you select it and hit the check mark. It says enter passphrase. Now you can enter basically anything you like here, all right? Um, there's no limit on what your passphrase can be, but also you need to remember it because if you lose it, um, you will not be able to access your funds and you will have no idea if you're even putting it in incorrectly. So make sure it's something you know and you remember. All right, now what does this do? It creates an entirely separate Bitcoin wallet that builds on top of your seed that you already have. So the SD backup, or if you went in and you uh, wrote down your 12 or 24 words in the settings there, it's basically adding an additional word to that and it creates an entirely different wallet that nobody would be privy to even if they had your app full access to your seed phrase they would still need your passphrase and they would need to know that a passphrase even exists in the first place so when entering your passphrase you can toggle between uh uppercase letters if you go down to the bottom right the you'll see the little button down here uh uppercase letters if you hit it once it goes to numbers if you hit it again it goes to lowercase letters uh, you also have uh, under the one you have some symbols and everything there okay so uh, i can just do um, we'll do a passphrase that is test t e s t and you hit it multiple times to get for those old, non old school textures, uh, multiple times to get to the subsequent letters. Okay, so I entered test. I'm going to hit check mark. This applies the passphrase to the existing seed in the device. Check mark. At this point, this is an entirely separate account from the one we've previously interacted with on all of those uh, optional wallets, whether it be Envoy or Blue Wallet or Sparrow. 
this one is no longer the same thing. We would have to re-import this specific wallet. So you'd have to go to manage account and connect wallet in order to send and receive from this particular account. And once you actually shut down this device, uh, the passphrase will be forgotten. Okay, so it will start back as the regular account you're used to dealing with. And in order to access the same account again, you've got to go to the right and enter passphrase and put it in here. Okay, so this is indeed creating an entirely different wallet. Um, and you can do this if you want to perhaps create a secondary account um, that is hidden, or perhaps you want a decoy account. Your main account is the decoy that has a little bit of Bitcoin, and the passphrase is the real account that has your actual savings. How you use a passphrase is up to you, but again, I will stress, you cannot forget what the passphrase is. Otherwise, you're pretty hooped. There's no way to access it without remembering that passphrase exactly as written. I'm going to finish here with my thoughts on the positives and negatives in and around the passport. Um, you know, what I encountered in the midst of making this tutorial. So let's start with the positives, the things that I really liked. Um, number one, the body improvements to the device itself, right? Um, I do have the original batch one passport. Um, they've made this one slimmer. This screen is better. Um, overall, it just feels a little bit uh, more up to date. Um, although, you know, I was a little bit nostalgic over the, the, um, I don't want to say clunky, but like that Nokia brick feel of the previous one, but this is definitely up to date. looks a little bit more sleek. Right. Um, and the improvement with the screen is, is nice. Uh, also I appreciate the USB C charging and the rechargeable battery. I think that's great. Um, overall, I find QR air gapping to be very convenient. Um, I like that method. You do have the SD card method if you prefer, and you saw in the menus, you can export the transaction via SD card if you see fit, but the QR is pretty sleek, easy to use. Um, another nice thing about this is it's compatible with a number of different options. Um, they list a whole bunch on their website. Um, but I mean, we just did some examples. They have their Envoy app. They have Blue Wallet that you can pair with. Sparrow is one. Spectre is another. Wasabi is another. Casa is another. Um, there's a ton of different options and more being added all the time. Now you're not going to get the kind of compatibility of something like say a ledger or a Trezor just for nothing other than those guys have been around for years and years. Um, but uh, these guys are definitely working hard to be compatible with as many options as possible. Um, the other thing that you wouldn't get out of something like a Trezor or a ledger is the fact that this device is Bitcoin only natively. Um, and that's a huge positive. Why? Well, because with added complexity comes added attack vectors. And so having support for other coins means that this device can be inherently less secure. And so I always prefer dealing with something that is Bitcoin only, or at the very least, you have a Bitcoin only firmware option. Um, now, what about downsides or, or issues that I ran into? Well, um, number one, it should be known that currently, as it stands right now, this device is one of the devices that's probably near the high end of the price points for hardware wallets or signing devices out there at around 260 US dollars at the time of recording this video. So it is expensive, whether or not you deem that to be a worthy expenditure, then that is entirely a personal question. Um, now, I ran into a few little issues that are, I'll say probably just soft. Yeah, they are just software related. Um, little bugs, glitches where usually like a restart will, will do the trick. Um, and I tend not to dwell on these, but I, I want to bring them up just to be completely transparent. So um, uh, I found that the, the six key sometimes was not super responsive, but it, it could just be the angle of my thumb. Um, I found initially until I did a software update, um, every once in a while, the SD card would not 
read. And so I would reboot the device and then that seemed to do the trick. Um, but yeah, for a little while there, I was having some trouble with the SD card. Um, during setup, the back button, the little, uh, the little back X in the corner here, um, I would assume is like a backspace. It did not function as such for me. Um, so when we're writing down all those, uh, all of those numbers for our backup code, um, I accidentally, when re-entering them, skipped a spot and I went to back, backspace, and it didn't work for me. So I had to go back and re-enter all of them. Um, I don't know if that's intentional or not, uh, but it was kind of annoying. So you know, a little fix there would be nice. Again, that's not anything inherent with the hardware itself. Um, the scanning QR codes, I'm very glad that they have the resizing, but it defaults to a size that I find is difficult to scan in most accounts, okay? So uh, Blue Wallet had a hell of a time scanning the default size, and I didn't realize that you could resize the QR codes initially because there wasn't really any indication that you could. So I sat there for X number of minutes trying to scan until I finally started messing around and realized, oh, I can make it a bigger QR code. And then it scanned pretty quickly. So just be aware of things like that. Same thing happened in Sparrow Wallet, uh, but I pretty quickly figured out, okay, let's enlarge it. Let's scan using HD. And then it did the trick right away. So um, maybe changing that default so that it, scan it defaults to a larger QR code would be a, a good update. Um, and then the one big thing that I wanted to mention, and I, I'm going to preface this by saying that this is beyond my expertise to truly be able to comment on and decipher, but there was um, some uh, banter about the chip used within this device online amongst a number of people. Um, and why was that? Well, the manufacturer of this particular chip um, had said something about the security of the chip and they advised uh, it's better to for manufacturers to use the new one and not use the old one, but the old one is in this device. Now, I will say that, again, it's kind of beyond my area of expertise to assess that risk. So you're going to have to do a little bit of your own research there and gauge how much of a risk factor that is for you. Obviously, they've gone ahead and they've made the device and shipped it as is. And so um, the one thing I will say here is that if you have a device that is stolen, if you have a device that is lost, um, it should be the default assumption that with enough time, expertise, and the proper tools, somebody may be able to extract and access the keys to your money. And so you should already be actively trying to move those funds out to a safe location. Also, enacting something like a passphrase may uh, help against any like actual hardware vulnerabilities. And all of these vulnerabilities, I believe, hinge on physical access to the device if there are any. But again, caveat for the third time, this is kind of beyond my area of expertise to truly assess the security of a chip. So go online, take a look, make a judgment call for yourself. But I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention that this is something that some people um, were thinking about. Okay, so that is my overall thought. And in the end, in terms of just sheer functionality, um, this device functions uh, more or less as expected, right? You're gonna be able to create your seed phrase. You're gonna be able to use it with a variety of different wallets and uh, interact with your Bitcoin in an air-gapped, secure way. So um, yeah, overall, I had a good experience with the Passport. I've had a good experience with the Passport Batch 1 in the past. Um, and I'm curious to hear what you think. So what do you think now that you've seen through this video? Maybe you have a passport. Maybe you have the old one thinking about the new one. Let me know your thoughts on whether it be positive, negative, or somewhere in between in the comments down below. Always curious to hear what you guys have to say. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do like, subscribe, share. All those things really do help get this content in front of more eyeballs. Uh, so if it was useful to you, feel free to share it around to anybody else that might also uh, get some benefit from it. You can also help the show in another way. If you see fit, uh, you can hit up the previously mentioned sponsors down below. CoinKite, ShakePay, Ledin, BitRefill, BillFoddle. They're all down here. And if you really liked what you saw, you can always drop me a Bitcoin tip at my strike page, strike.me slash BTC sessions. Get there, type in any amount you like, hit the tip button. You will see a lightning invoice, or if you prefer, tap the arrow to the right, you'll see a Bitcoin QR code. With that, I'm out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening. See you guys next time for your daily session. Huddle the Bitcoin.